All right, so now we have our site terrain all matched up with our existing site plan. But what can we do with this terrain and how could we actually cut some sections here? I'm going to ask you to first um, hide the image layer. Just turn it off for now. If you have your hatches uh, still up on Rhino, you can select them using the command cell hatch. It's going to be easier to work with this file if these hatches aren't showing up right now. So use your quick menu, which is pressing down the center button of your mouse wheel, and then use this little light bulb to hide those objects. So it's going to be a little bit tough to see because of the colors that I've selected. So maybe I'll just change this to black so that we can see the images better. Also put this back to wireframe view and that way we can see the mesh and the objects together at the same time. So the next thing we want to do after we have matched everything up is to convert this mesh surface to a NURB surface. Okay, now I'm going to just delete these old surfaces that we used to match up our files. We don't need those anymore. Now go into your layers panel and make sure you're on this um, mesh terrain layer and then turn off your line work. To get this mesh into a poly surface that we can use, there's a few ways to do it, um, but some of them lead to more errors than others. If, for example, we took this mesh and we used the same command that we used to turn the other meshes into NURBS, that's mesh to NURB, it would do it, but we would end up with a very complicated subdivided section of meshes. So uh, if we then went and tried to merge all these faces together, we would probably crash Rhino. So I don't recommend doing it that way. Let's just go back and go back to our mesh. The command that we're going to use is drape. You're going to drag a window inside the boundary of your mesh. So starting from the upper left corner, draw a window that reaches to the lower right corner. And you see that it creates a new surface. So we can select this mesh behind. And if you want to keep it, you can just use your quick menu to hide the object or you can delete it. And now we have a highly detailed surface that is more friendly to work with in Rhino. Now I'm going to go over to my properties panel here and turn off the surface ISO curves. That just means all of those little curves that split the surface up into pieces are not shown anymore. All right, so now we have our surface terrain in NURBS um, and now we can generate contours. So if we go into our front view here, we see a front view of our terrain. Let's use the command contour to generate contours. First thing we'll do is select the object for our contours, which is of course our terrain. Press enter and then select a contour base point. We're going to select a point in this front view that is anywhere below the model. So it can be anywhere, but just don't snap it to the end point of the model. Make sure it's below. So I'm going to do mine from there. And then you uh, select a direction perpendicular to the contour planes. And we're just going to press shift and draw our second point above the model there. Now this one is asking, what is the distance between the contours? This essentially means how high do you want your contours to be? So if you have a site that doesn't have a lot of slope to it, you might want to change this to one. But if you have a site like mine that has quite a bit of elevation change, um, you might want to use a higher number like five or 10. I'm going to use five. Let's press enter. And you can see that Rhino begins to generate those contours of your site automatically. So let's go back to top view. And now we can take a look at what we have all together. If we go to our lines, our layers, and turn on our line work, change our display mode back to wireframe so that we can see what's happening here. We have this site topography. 
we have our designated one kilometer squares with all of the blocks and buildings that we traced for our figure ground. And we have contour lines that delineate the height of our site from wherever our zero point is all the way up to the top. 